My name is Sam Vaknin, and I'm the author of Malignant Self-Love, Narcissism Revisited. I'm not impressed with the level of public education, but is private education the solution? In economics textbooks, education often appears as public good. Contrary to common misconceptions, public goods are not goods provided by the public, in other words, by the government. Public goods are sometimes supplied by the private sector, and private goods are sometimes offered or preferred by the public sector. Pure public goods are characterized by three features. One, non-rivalry. The cost of extending the service or providing the good to another person is close to zero. Most products are rivalrous. In other words, scarce. They are zero-sum games. Having been consumed, these products are gone and no longer available to others. Public goods, in contrast, are accessible to growing numbers of people without any additional marginal cost. Then there is no... It is impossible to exclude anyone from enjoying the benefits of, of a public good or from defraying its costs. Neither can anyone willingly exclude himself from their remit. There also, there's also the question of externalities. Public goods impose costs or, be, or benefits on others, individual and firms, outside the marketplace. And their effects are only partially reflected in prices and in market transactions. So, non-rivalry, non-excludability and externalities. The usual examples for public goods are lighthouses, national uh, defense, the GPS navigation system, vaccine, vaccination programs, dams, and public art, such as park concerts. The list above proves that public goods are not necessarily provided or financed by public institutions, but governments frequently intervene to reverse market failures. In other words, when the market fails to provide goods and services, the government steps in. Governments also seek to reduce transaction costs so as to enhance consumption and supply, and thus positive externalities. Governments, for instance, provide preventive care. Preventive care is a non-profitable healthcare niche, and governments subsidize education. And they do this because these things have an overall positive social effect. In other words, positive externalities. Education used to be a private good, not a public good, but a private good. It had positive externalities, positive social impact and benefits to the community at large, but it was private. Thanks to technology and government largesse in the last 150 years, education is no longer private. It is mostly public. Education is being transformed into a non-pure public good. Consider the above-mentioned three criteria for public good as they apply to education today. Technology-rich education is non-rivalrous. The cost of educating one extra person is very close to zero. Like its traditional counterpart, traditional or conventional education, technology-rich education has positive externalities. Technology-rich education can be replicated and disseminated virtually cost-free to the next consumer via the internet, television, radio, and magnetic media. MIT has recently placed 500 of its courses online, made them freely accessible. Distance learning is spreading like wildfire. Webcasts and podcasts can host, in principle, unlimited amounts of students. The cost of downloads and even DVDs is close to zero. So education is disseminated. In this sense, modern education, disseminated by a modern technology, has become a public good. Yet all forms of education are exclusionary. Remember that public goods are non-excludable. No one can be excluded or can ex exclude himself from public goods. But education in all its forms, including technology-rich education, is exclusionary. It excludes certain people, at least in principle. It is impossible to exclude a citizen from the benefits of his country's national defense, 
or his country's dams but, or roads. But it is perfectly feasible to exclude would-be students from access to education, both online and offline. This caveat, however, equally applies to other goods universally recognized as public. It is possible to exclude certain members of a population from being vaccinated, for instance. It is possible to impose tolls on public roads. It is possible to exclude certain people from attending a public concert in the park. Other public goods require an initial investment by the would-be beneficiaries. One can hardly benefit from the weather forecast without owning a radio or television set, which, which would immediately tend to exclude the homeless and the rural poor in many countries. It is even conceivable to extend the benefits of national defense selectively and to exclude parts of the population, as the Second World War has taught the Jews and Roma all too well. So, while technology-rich education is non-rivalrous, it is still excludable. You can exclude certain people from it. Nor is strict non-rivalry possible, at least not simultaneously. Our world is finite, and so is everything in it, including, for instance, broadband. Economic scarcity applies universally, and public goods are not exempt. There are only so many people who can attend a concert in the park. Only so many ships can be guided by a lighthouse. Only so many people can be defended by the army and the police. This phenomenon is called crowding, and it amounts to the exclusion of potential beneficiaries. Here we go into the economic theories of jurisdictions and clubs and so on. Non-rivalry and non-excludability are ideals, they are not realities. They apply strictly only to sunlight and air. As environmentalists keep warning us, even air is a scarce commodity recently. Technology gradually helps render many goods and services, books and education, to name two of them, merely asymptotically non-rivalrous and unexcludable. We still have a long way to go. Yet, certain conclusions can be derived. Even private education is rendered public, a public good through the use of technology. When governments license and accredit higher education institutes, they must insist on a high level of technology in all aspects of the educational process. They must also force private providers of education to give back to the community via technologies such as the Internet. Governments, therefore, must strive to render education in all its forms more and more a public good. Only then will private and public education converge and quality may rise.